And th that is the reality, and yet it's so, it would be astonishingly hard for someone to believe that that could be the case, that it's all junk science. And all of the cholesterol lipidologists and specialists, one thing I love that came out in your book, they all focus on the detailed science of the cholesterol particles, but they never stand back and look at the process and what's actually going on. They avoid that like the plague. They draw us down from Thomas Dayspring to Atia to all of them. They draw us down into a complex world of particles and dazzle. It's like the classic shell trick or the magician's trick. You draw the audience down away from logic and simple reality and you get them where you want them, where you have power over them, majesty. That's what they do in lipidology. The most powerful thing to decide a hypothesis is correct or not is to find a falsifying fact. Uh, way more powerful than finding a supporting fact. You can have 50 supporting facts, you still don't prove it. One falsifying fact, and you've disproven it. Now you're doing science. It is interesting that a whole series of drugs were developed um, in, around about the turn of the millennium. Five billion dollars, was, I believe, was spent on researching these drugs. And, and what they did was they increased the HDL, the high-density lipoprotein, the, the form of lipoprotein that we call good cholesterol. And it reduced the LDL, the low-density lipoprotein, the, the form of lipoprotein we call bad cholesterol. Neither of them are cholesterol. This is another problem, is that nomenclature is insane. We have substances floating around in our blood that are little spheres which contain fats and cholesterol and other things. And we call them cholesterol. That's like calling a car a human being because cars have human beings inside them. We also call some of these lipoproteins, we call them triglycerides because, because they contain triglycerides. Going back to my citrapids, the citrapids lowered the low density lipoprotein by up to 40%. In one case, 37% reduction, more than most statins, increased the high density lipoprotein by about 120%, when it virtually doubled it. Now, according to all the hypotheses kicking around, that we should have seen a dramatic reduction in the rate of cardiovascular disease. The, the actual rate of reduction of cardiovascular disease we saw from these drugs combined was a slight increase in cardiovascular disease. Now, these drugs didn't launch for the very simple reason that they achieved absolutely nothing. And even some of the cardiologists who are sort of internationally famous, Stephen Nissen, probably the most influential cardiologist in the world, mm. looked at these results and said, oh, well, maybe we've got everything wrong. I mean, he's changed his mind since, obviously. But um, he, he, he said, well, actually, it looks like raising HDL isn't a good idea, and it looks like maybe lowering LDL isn't a good idea. And then that was that. You hear nothing more of it. They found a population in, in Italy who had a very low HDL level. I can't remember exactly. It was like 50% lower than normal. So in theory, this wonderful protecting good cholesterol should have should have done good but they had a very very low rate of heart disease much lower than the surrounding population and the, the heart disease in italy is relatively low compared to or quite low compared to the uk or the us or ireland or whatever they said well that doesn't make any sense so what's going on well they looked at their hdl and they said ah it's a specific protein attached to it which we called apo a1 milano so so they they synthesized this protein they stuck it onto HDL and they injected it into people. And, um, and Stephen Nissen said it was amazing. It was like liquid drano. We could see the cholesterol being pulled out of the plaques. The plaques were disappearing. It was like watching a cloud on a summer's day. It just disappeared. Then, and, then, um, and then the company was sold for a billion dollars to, um, to, to Pfizer, who then actually carried out some clinical trials and found it didn't do any bloody good at all. 